In this tutorial, we're going to extend a, an existing application and we're going to show maps. So in a previous version of this GPS application, we had an ability to capture all of these attributes of our location. We were able to turn off and turn on the location updates, set the settings for precision so it could use GPS or the Wi-Fi towers. In this version of the application, we are going to have the ability to show a list of all of the places that we visited, and then we're going to be able to show a map that will point a pinpoint where each of those locations is. And then finally, we have a button at the bottom that says drop breadcrumb, which means wherever the current location is, we're gonna add a new pin to the map and a new item to the list. And so that's what we're gonna do in the next few videos. Now, if you haven't already completed this uh, application as the uh, GPS demo, then you need to back up. And there were like five different videos that will show you how to create this. So we're on video number six right now. So I'm transitioning back to the uh, version of the application that was at the end of last tutorial. So at this version, we just had latitude, longitude, speed, accuracy, and the address. We were able to turn on and turn off all of the different options. And so now we're going to add those abilities to have the list of things that we've breadcrumbed and also have a list on our map with pinpoints. So that's what we're going to start with now. So step one here is I'm going to show you how to add a global address list so that way every activity in the, in the program can see the list. So what we need to do is extend the application class and make a place where we can put global variables. So let's add that class now. So I'm going to switch over to the folders where we have all of our Java applications. And uh, let's see, what I'm looking for is where we have our main activity. Yeah, so this is the place, this is the folder that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna right click and add a new Java class. And we're gonna call this thing My Application. So I'm going to extend the super class as application which is going to allow us to choose this global list. So you'll see how this works in a minute. Uh, okay, so you can see that I'm using GitHub, so I'm getting this error that says, hey, you've just added something. Do you want to add it to your repository? You might not see that. All right, so here is our new class. We have main activity, which is what we've been working on, and now we have my application. So my application extends the application class. The first thing we have to do is set this up as a singleton. A singleton means that there's only one instance allowed. And we can create the instance the first time we call this object, but after that, we're going to make sure that there is only one. So a singleton is a, is a standard kind of uh, programming method. So if you Google it, you'll find other examples in other languages. But we need to have a proper or a method called uh, get instance. And then we're going to uh, assign it this, this property called singleton, which is an uh, instance of itself, my application. Then if we uh, go to the onCreate method, so when this thing is first made, we are going to refer to the singleton as this, which is this class. So this here is the properties for a singleton. Now, after we have the singleton created, we can add some variables that will be treated as singleton variables again. They will be kind of like globals. Now, the global list that we're interested in maintaining here is a list of locations. So you remember from the previous uh, view of this app, we're going to have a list of locations or location breadcrumbs. And so the list type that we're looking for is of type location. So we'll just name it my locations. Then we're going to generate getters and setters. So that way we can get the list and we can set the list or we can add items to it. But the point is that this list will be a single source of where we've been, where we've dropped our breadcrumbs. So one activity can see this as well as another. Now we have to make sure that this list is initialized. So the onCreate method seems to be the right place for this. We will create a new array list and it can be empty. So at least it's not null. So let's return to the main activity and we're going to add a new button called drop breadcrumbs. So let's come into here where the, uh, all the controls are and let's put in a couple of text items and then a button. So first of all, I'm going to put in a label and then a text view that will count the number of breadcrumbs that we've dropped. So we could call these breadcrumbs or waypoints. They're kind of used interchangeably here. So the first one is a label. So I'm just going to call this text as waypoints. And we're going to set the constraints that it'll fit here below the sensor and it'll stick to the left side of the screen. 
Then the next text view will actually be the number of waypoints that we're going to collect or count. And so this guy here will have the text of zero. And we'll make sure that its uh, constraints are stuck to the top of the uh, previous label and right to the edge of it. So now we've got ourselves two labels, or we've got two text views. One's a label and one's a number zero. So what, what are you going to do with those? Well, now we're going to count the number of items that we've dropped in as breadcrumbs. Well, now we need to create that button so we can do the dropping. So I'm going to drag a new button in. So this next new button that we're going to put is called the new waypoint button. So let's set the constraints so that way it is just below the label and the uh, number that we've, that we've created. Let's set the width so that it extends to the left and to the right of the screen. And the constraints will make it the full width. Then for the button name, of course, let's create a button that's called the uh, new waypoint. That'll be a good ID for the button, and that'll also be good text. Let's create another button below that, and we'll call that show waypoint list. So once again, we'll set the constraints so that it fills up the entire width of the screen and fits nicely below the previous button. And then a good name for uh, the ID on this button should be like uh, show waypoint list and that could be a good name for the text as well. All right, so now we've got ourselves two buttons. One of them is New Waypoint, and that will save the current location into the list. And the second one is Show the Waypoint List. And we'll probably get to that one in the next video. But now we want to start programming these buttons. So the New Waypoint button is our first target. So let's go into the main activity and start doing the code. So main activity needs to have a reference to this. So let's get to the top of the screen where we have the references. So I'm going to add two new button variables here. The first one is for the waypoint. So new waypoint is the ID that I used. And the second one is show waypoint list. And both of these have the prefix of btn. In the onCreate method for this uh, activity, we need to then assign these values to the uh, variables. So we'll use find view by ID for each of these guys, assign them, and so that now the button variables have been configured and initialized correctly. So now let's go ahead and program the button listener for this button. So we will do the set on click listener and we will add a new button click listener. Inside the method called on click, let's put some comments to see what we're up to. So first of all, we're going to get the GPS location, the current thing that we're talking about. And then we're going to add that to a global list. So really that's the focus of this video here is we're trying to capture a list of items called breadcrumbs or waypoints. Now I want to create two class level, level variables. So let's scroll up to the top here. And the first one that I'm going to create is a variable, we'll call it current location. And so we'll update this variable every time the GPS is updated from the uh, callback methods. So this will be an easy accessible uh, variable that all activities can get to. Then we will have a list of saved locations. So this will be a list and it'll be a type location. And the uh, saved locations is a great name for it. Now you're wondering, what is this location thing again? This is the class that is used by Android uh, Maps and GPS. A, a location contains a bunch of things, the latitude, the longitude, the altitude, the speed if it's available. And so it's a class that contains a lot of information about a GPS point. All right, so where would be a good place to update this thing called current location? Well, I think there was a callback method that we created in the previous videos. And let's see if we can find it. So down below, way down here, we have update GPS. And this looks like the thing. So this function here, or this method called update GPS, has the listener in it. So we have the uh, get last location going on here. And let's go see if we can put this into our uh, current location. So we're doing update UI values. Let's also put the current location here as this value called location with a lowercase l. So this guy here is the current location. So let's just save him to a, a variable that's further out. All right, so let's go find the uh, click button that we were already programming earlier. This is the new waypoint. So in the comments, in the unclick, it says get the GPS location. So there should be one in that variable called uh, current location. Then the second is add it to the global list. 
So this might look a little strange, but we're going to try to get access to this global class called My Application. So let's create a reference to it. And then all we have to do to get this variable uh, assigned a value is to call get application context and cast it to my application. All right, so that should provide an access to that class. Now, if I want to do the saved locations, I'm going to be able to get that from my application, and we should say there is a getter in that class, get my locations. Perfect. Okay, so saved locations now is the little global list. Now the last step is to take the saved locations and we're going to add an item to it, which is the current location. All right, so we have this global list of locations. And when we click the button, uh, we're going to add a new item to it. Now this will still cause an error. We have to do one more step that I'll have to uh, show you in a minute. We have to s change something in our manifest. But the, uh, the general idea should work. Now I'm going to borrow these uh, two lines here and reuse them in the UI. So let's go down to the class that says uh, where we're going to update the UI values. Right? So in this location I'm trying to update the uh, number of items in the list of waypoints. So I need to add a text view and what was it called? Waypoints counts or something? Doesn't look like I've added that yet. So let's let's go back and fix that problem. So I gotta go to the very top here and add another reference to an item in my layout. So I forgot to do that earlier. So let's go to the text view items and let's call this thing waypoint counts. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's the actual name for it, but we can use that. And then down here in the list of assignments we can do this text view waypoint counts okay I called it count of crumbs that's the actual name so we'll use that count of crumbs <laughs> okay now let's go back down to the uh, area where they were doing the updates on the UI so near the end of the program so what did I want to do I wanted to say the waypoint counts and set the text so the goal here is to show the number of items that are in my list so let's do the uh, uh, saved locations dot size and don't forget that we have to convert this into a string so I'm going to use the integer dot to string method and then we should have an actual string that we can assign to the text so that should update the UI alright so I told you there was one more thing that I have to fix so I'm gonna run the program and it should crash alright just as I predicted the application crashed Let's go look at the log cat and see if we can understand where the error is because for sure you're going to see one of these items when it comes your way if you're using this global class. All right, so I got way too much stuff here. I'm just going to click on the trash can and let's see, I'll re relaunch the app and maybe we can get a message that I can find here. Okay, so we got the app running again and it crashed the second time. Now, here is the error. It says application cannot be cast to this thing called my application. So there it is on line 262. This thing here doesn't work. Now, I promised you it would. And let's see if there is any helpful hints on it. All right, so there are no helpful hints to, to know what you're supposed to do here. But I'll tell you what, what the problem is. Let's go into the manifest, as I promised. And what we need to do is we need to give the application a name. So let's go into the properties and we're going to call this thing name. Android colon name. And there it is. It's suggesting my application. There it is. That's the problem. Isn't that a weird kind of a thing? But anyway, that will cause the error to disappear. And let's see if we can get the app up and running now. Okay, there we go. So the... Uh, Location is right now at building 84. There are zero waypoints. Let's choose new waypoint. And let's see, the uh, UI has not been updated. So let's just shut this off and turn it back on. And there we got one waypoint. Let's do another one. So every time the app updates and gets a new location, the UI should also update. So I think that happens about every 30 seconds right now. So I don't want to wait 30 seconds. So I'm just going to shut it off, re-trigger it. Okay, so we got two waypoints. Now in the next video, we're going to show that list. And then the th video after that, we're gonna create a new button and we'll show them on a map. So we're getting closer. So what we got here 
was the ability to save a waypoint in a global list. We'll see you in a minute in the next video.